Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe. We're here with a list I found off Twitter. Apologies, I couldn't find at a screenshot of the deck, but I didn't catch the name. So if you do know who originated the deck, uh, please let me know in the comments on YouTube below. I'd like to give credit where credit's due. Um, so this is a black white Tesa Karlov kind of aristocrat, so self sacrifice deck, cat oven kind of value, get stuff back from the grave deck. Um, so Tesa is whenever a creature you control triggers an ability, or whenever a creature dies and triggers a permanent ability, you get to double up those abilities. And then creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. The token part isn't as relevant, but kind of in this deck. It's more the double up on triggers. So you, with your cat, you can get two t uh, food tokens each turn. Um, with your cruel celebrant triggers, you can get two death triggers, two afterlife triggers. Also, tithe taker is good against a lot of the flash decks. Midnight Reaper draws you two cards. Um, and then you have stuff like Cavalier of Dawn, which can blow up other like ovens or other creatures stuff and when it dies you can return an enchantment so if they blow up like our ovens we can get that back uh, massacre girl is a way to wipe the board cavalier at night can kill stuff and then when it dies we can get back two creatures from our graveyard so it's kind of some value there and then with the token theme we get like afterlife tokens cavalier uh, dawn golem tokens and then liliana tokens so those all get lifelink and then we have blood for bones which will allow us to kind of recycle some of our threats, get back some of our key stuff from the graveyard. Uh, mana base wise, pretty simple. Uh, eight duels, it's a couple black castles, one white castle. Sideboard wise, I switched from the original list. They had another black and white cavalier on the side. I wanted a little bit more variety of answers. Um, so we have Duress versus kind of control -y decks, Legion's End uh, versus the aggro, Grasp versus green or white stuff, the Spark versus uh, Bigger Gruel, Questing Beast will be a problem for this deck, so stuff like that. Uh, Spyglass works well against the Oven or Jeskai decks. Kaya is good against Oven or any sort of graveyard deck. Kaya's Wrath is for the bigger decks, including like Jeskai Cavalier's Fire. Uh, just a way to kind of reset the board. Soren lets us in the grindier matchups bring stuff back from our graveyard. And Ethereal Absolution breaks the mirror. Uh, for the Cat Oven deck, they get the cat back but it instantly dies so they don't get to sack it again. Um, so it's pretty much the deck. We'll run it through some rank. Um, I apologize for a little bit of the ticking in the background noise. It is currently a hailstorm. Um, and my desk is beside the computer. So staying inside. Uh, hopefully power doesn't go out. But it is a nasty one outside. So we finished last month. A couple ranks or a couple wins short of Mythic. So we will be playing at gold level for now. We will take it from there, black white Tesa, and then we'll go from here. So apologies, haven't been putting out as much content the last couple days. Life's been a, a bit busy, uh, just gearing up into the holiday season. I uh, will be the featured content creator in mid-December, so we'll have some codes to give away. So I'll provide some more details once I get it. Uh, but as always, if you miss any of my live streams, everything's up on the YouTube channel. And hopefully we find a good deck to run with. Haven't found anything I've been like super sold on. Like I've had the most fun probably with the Team or Adventures deck, but I feel like it's a little kind of lacking against all these food decks. It's kind of a weird race that you kind of lose on most of the time. Um, not crazy about this hand to be honest. Opponent goes first, so maybe we'll keep. So this looks likely a, a cat deck. Okay, they have Dreadboard. I might just aggressively, ooh, Tithe Taker is actually a good draw. Um, so here, let's just go Castle. Tithe Taker can trade with the Butcher. And then the Spirit can trade with Gutter Bones. So we're going to have to kill Chandra here. So we'll end up kind of neutral on board after this. 
the afterlife token could trade with gutter bones. And then we can follow it up with Tithe Taker and Cruel Celebrant. And that should hopefully insulate our life total a bit. get the two I could gain a life let's go no blocks here they missed the line drop so hold them off for now because we'll gain the life back anyways and get to drain them for one We are getting to the point where we can start castling each turn. Spawn and Mayhem scary. It's actually very scary for us. Um, let's just go Murderous Rider here. No attacks. Uh, if they went all out, do they kill us? So we do need to draw a board wipe here. Or not a board, a uh, murderous rider. Cat doesn't quite do it. Okay, so I'm not going to show him that we have cat. Spawn of Mayhem is difficult to deal with for a deck. Uh, so I'm going to put in a Kai's Wrath, uh, bring in the Soren Ethereal Absolution. Uh, in this matchup, the Spark's a little fringe. Legion's End actually isn't too bad. Uh, we'll probably be. So Cavalier of Dawn could come out, I think. Massacre Girl's good. Three cuts. Liliana, actually, Blood for Bones we can get out. I don't think we're going to be Blood for Bonesing. And cut one Midnight Reaper. The uh, Kai's Wrath can help us reset. Massacre Girl can help us reset. Because on that board, say, oh, Massacre Girl would have got us out of it. Keep this hand. So Cat gains us some life, Legion's End. Probably save the Legion's End for Dread... Oh no, that's scary enough. See what they have. Okay, so they could stomp the Cat. Ah, so we're trying to dodge this because like and that's the reason we were gonna attack just keep that no blocks or no attacks so they can stomp here attack us for three then we murderous rider or attack us for two. You can also Judith to try to push through some extra damage. Um, yeah, we got a block. Uh. 
so we'll keep that. I need a one power creature to get the Massacre Girl going. So probably just Murderous Rider, Dreadhorde Butcher. Because the problem is they can just stomp this to get through the damage, so I'd rather Murderous Rider get this off the board. Judith does more damage in the end, but that's going to get bigger. So kill before combat. They don't get the card draw. So we'll set it up like this. I can block like Midnight Reaper here. I want to try to get that stomp out of their hand. Okay, so that gains us a life. Play like a Gutter Bones. Just gain the life here. They'll draw two cards. want to see gutter bones out or like dread horde butcher or something we have quite a few ways to trigger in this deck okay cavalier and knight in and of itself is a big body, so we'll just play it. We can get back the cat when it dies. So I think what I'll do is if they go all out attack, I'm going to block the Midnight Reaper so they don't get all the card draw off the Massacre Girl. Uh, Chandra sucks. Okay, so that's four. So I net that out. That's nine, eleven. So if I block this, I gain 4, I take, f so I go up to 11, then it's 4, 6, 11. So I got a block here. That dies. Yeah, I think I'm dead regardless. Because Judith triggers and it hits me. Oh, does this keep me alive? Oh, it keeps me alive for a turn. But uh, I think I'm dead regardless, because Legion's End won't quite do it, because the Judas triggers kill me. Yeah, we're dead. Yeah. Ah. That one sucked. <laughs> Run it back. A little bit of an awkward hand. Played like two games already, haven't seen Oven.
No white source. Ah, triple cat. I'll keep this in. Scry hopefully into another block source or an oven. Might actually put back a cat. What lands at this point? The goose. So I just think mana wise, let's go like this in case they are any sort of counter base deck. Yeah, this is Rakdos food. So this costs them one more mana to activate and it costs the cat one more mana to activate each turn. So they can't actually activate Goose and then pay the mana to draw a card. Come on. So we'll double up on here. I think they're trying to activate the goose and not. During your turn, spells your opponent's cast and abilities your opponent activate cost unless they're mana abilities. Thought that was triggered. Oh, come on, opponent. You sack that, that ability gets triggered, and this is just act. Uh, I guess it's activated, not triggered ability. little annoying with his mana situation right now like they just make another goo egg So they couldn't activate it there because Tithe Taker taxes them. So they get Vraska. Vraska could down tick here on the Tithe Taker, which is a little annoying. They opt for Brontodon. Take the trade here. Um, so I can shock, take this out, attack in with both. They take two. Vraska comes down, down ticks on the Tithe Taker. I still have two flyers I can hit into Vraska. Uh, that's annoying. We are just really not drawing lines this game. Problem is this becomes pseudo like indestructible now. Hmm. 
They could also Vraska down tick on one of the flyers, hold up two blockers. It's interesting. Probably just make a food is my guess. Make a food, get a cat, sack it, draw a card. Yeah, these green decks tend to be a little bit better at creating food. Like we just have the oven as the only way to generate food in this deck. Where they have goose, trail, and cauldron. It's actually not bad. Because if we draw a lion, we massacre girl here. Also not terrible. This might force a murderous rider out of them. They're getting the life back anyways off cat. Well, actually, they don't have a way to sack it right now. Draw into another rider. Okay, we see Vraska come down here. So that gets him the cat in the graveyard. Cat's able to come back. Okay, we get castle. Because it's gonna die anyways. To the massacre girl, want to gain some life. Oh Going massacre girl here because it will guarantee that Wicked Wolf dies, whereas Cavalier won't. We've also yet to draw Tesa in three games. We haven't drawn Oven, we haven't drawn Tesa. So they still have a Vraska live, but getting the Gilded Goose off, like the reoccurring food, is beneficial. They do get a second Trail of Crumbs. Casualties main that sets us back a bit. Would have really liked to get Liliana down. Your ultimate. You're gonna have whenever a creature deals combat damage, that player loses the game. Jeez, second casualties. At least this replaces itself, but we're down a couple lands. So we could have had Liliana going. May just have to value Cavalier here, or like no value. So 
So this is Sif guys, I think, or Strokey's uh, green black oven deck. Uh, so we just lose next turn. They have two cats, we can't block both of them. Yeah. Because they had Lum, the Vraska, and they beat us that way. Alright, so Grasps we want. Um, Kaya we want. Absolution. Probably a Kaya's Wrath. Legion's End is interesting, but I don't think we want it. And I'm assuming they have Oven, but they play Brontodon, so probably not the best. Uh, Blood for Bones could come out. Cavalier's interesting. Actually, don't think we want Cavalier of Night. Three cuts. Um, shave down at uh, Tasis. Probably this is the match we want it most. Maybe a Cruel Celebrant. Tie Taker was pretty good in this match. Slows down a lot of their ability. This gets rid of Trail of Crumb, so maybe just Cavalier of Night come out. And then shave down a Tesa. Just really want to get like part. Okay, so we got the oven, but we don't got anything else. So we're going to mulligan that. Going to keep this hand. Liliana could go to the bottom. So start with Cat. And then we go Cat Oven, and then hopefully just draw into Lions into Tesa. So they could go Brontodon next turn, potentially. So the White Cavalier is not bad here because it can get back our ovens if they get it destroyed. So just sack here. So we're gonna drop Tesa down. I th think we want more action. So I want like a Midnight Reaper, or something like that, that'll give us some card draw, some interaction of such. Opponent's really slow playing. They've used five more minutes of the clock than us. So they block sack draw. Oh, they opted to not draw there. Uh, so they got Brontodon here. We'll probably pop this now. Try to drain them as quick as possible. So 
So this might prompt them to sack. Oh, they don't. So sack this one. We get two food tokens. Why doesn't this give you two? Creature you control causes a creature you control dying causes a triggered ability. Sacrifice food if creature is tough. Why doesn't that trigger? Well, that's stupid. That should work. My creature died. I sacrificed it, it died. You create a food token. Oh, that's annoying. That should work. That's actually good for us. Makes these cats draw some cards, hopefully. And then we also have Black Castle to start uh, getting us ahead. So they have their own Midnight Reaper here. Um, I think we need to be aggressive. Like they block one. Oh, they just opt to do that so we don't get the card draw. Okay, so they finally find a cat. So Grasp doesn't do too much here. Just try to draw a card. See if we got a bit more action. Mm, just past turn. Worst case on end step, I'm gonna noxious grasp one of the gilded goose. And then um, draw a card off castle. I could probably just draw a card off castle and hold this for Vraska. Okay, so opponent's forcing our hand. So, kind of sucks they're taking out our castle. Okay, so we got Kaya. Kaya is a way we can potentially push through here. Do I Noxious Grasp this? I can push through a point of damage. Kaya can also exile there. Do they have any creatures? Just the Brontodon. So 
So let's see what we have on top. So they're going to get back the cat anyways. And then just protect Kaya. It's a way I think we can chip in some damage. So double cavalier or midnight reaper. So I can do this. They take two damage. Double block, they take two damage. I can noxious grasp. They take two more damage. That's down to four. I can gain some life off that. I think we do that. <clears throat> so block like this noxious grasp a goose so the reason I'm doing this is because if they had Vraska they likely would have played it They do get to draw four cards here, but I think the way I win this game is by trying to be aggressive here. Okay, and we got Absolution. Which is actually quite good for us here. Could have Brontodon. They can't get Cat back now because it instantly dies. They take the damage. No attacks. Next turn, we can also start exiling creatures to make 1 1s. They have 5 cards in exile. They got casualties. Oh, everything we've done just got nullified. They get cat back, and then they're just going to get a ton of life. This deck's very good at grinding this green black deck. I take the trade here just to gain, try to draw some cards. So they're gonna try to gain some life off this rider. We continue to draw lands, which isn't boding well for us. We're dead at this point. Yeah, they got Vraska. Okay, let me just reset the client. I'll play a best of one, see how it goes.
usually when I run about 45 minutes or so longer, the client starts lagging a bit. So I thought Tesa works with the oven. That was the whole draw of the deck. If it doesn't and you don't get the double food, it seems kind of lackluster. The guy who played it that I saw off Twitter got to Mythic. So it worked for him. And I imagine he did run into quite a bit of food. Alright, we'll keep this in. Red green adventure, perhaps teamer. So that's not a trade they generally want to take. We do want to be. We're like Ember Cleave's a real thing here. Also, Questing Beast. Okay, so they go Beanstalk. So this could be, yeah, Team or Adventure. Uh, probably want a Murderous Rider here, to be honest. They can shock here, like stomp. They're missing a second green as of right now for questing beasts. They also are missing a second blue for brazen borrower. Main phase growth spiral. Hey Quantum, how's it going? So I'm probably gonna blow up the innkeeper the following turn. Go brazen. Just play this back out. Running Cavalier Dons will be pretty good. Fay of Wishes. Chandra, the Immolation Sensation. They probably just play Faye here, draw a card. Do you make a Golem? So if they sweep the board, then... Mm, that's actually not terrible, because that draws us a bunch of cards. Or I can just Cavalier here. Kill the Fay of Wishes. They play Beanstalk. Now I think we go Midnight Reaper and bait them into the Chandra wipe. Let's go no attacks, play a land. Because if they go Beanstalk, then I go Cavalier. I want. I didn't attack with Tithe Taker here because it gets us a creature on the backside. Interesting.
So this is a way we can kind of win the game afterwards. Uh, no attacks. Because it's got Vigilance after. We get enough creatures out, Masker Girl wipes the board. Nah, so they got the Lucky Clover. Double Fey here. What do you do? Return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. Put up to one target card from your graveyard. Mass manipulation. Ooh. Okay, so we might... Be able to sneak a win here. Kind of want to wipe the board. So I get five death triggers off that. And then I get to return. I don't have any enchantments. Mass manipulation, they have access to two, so my guess is they steal. Let's just not give them many options, maybe. So they can steal my Masker Girl, but let's do that. The Chandra, they played it well there. Uh, they got Chandra back. Second Clover. So they can get Plain White Celebration is usually something they play in this deck. Yeah, this deck just doesn't reliably create enough food tokens. And without like the trail of crumbs to give you the card advantage. It's fine. We get to hit Chandra here. And the nice thing here, now that we have the oven, is if they target it with mass manipulation, we can sack it in response. So I feel this deck would benefit more from having like Command the Dread Horde. Um, let's sack here.
So I think my timing was a little off there. I should have let them select their three Lucky Clover targets first. They've drawn pretty well. Triple Lucky Clover. You got three things from your board. Lava Coil. Negate. And Celebration. Yeah, so they pretty much got us covered now. They got every answer that they need. So even if we resolve it. Yeah. I don't think we... Uh, Yeah, Team Adventures is definitely just one of those decks. It's a critical mass deck, so once you can get your clovers going, it's good. But other times you just play like one spell per turn and it feels pretty awkward. It has a very poor food matchup. Yeah, overall, this deck was okay. Like, it's kind of more cutesy than it is actually a functioning deck. Um, it's too heavy on the top end and you're not really doing anything super relevant early you have no engine other than the witch's oven and at most you're generating like a food a turn you're not getting really incremental with like uh, trail of crumbs or some of the other effects um, but if you have the cards try it out let me know if you, you play it differently than i did how it works out for you anyways i'm gonna wrap this one up thanks everyone for tuning in and have a great rest of the weekend and we'll catch you throughout the week with some more standard fun